Good morning, everybody. We are going to mount up a fawn today, a whitetail fawn. Uh, this is what we have. A newborn fawn. This is a little feller born here at Sampson's. He had a little accident. We're gonna try and preserve him and bring him back to life. And we're gonna pose him on this base right here, like a little meadow. And we're gonna do the Bambi uh, scene where the butterfly is on his tail and he's looking back. Bang! This is the base he'll be going on. Uh, what I have here is, this is the uh, form and I've cut it into pieces. This is the, I've cut the front legs off, cut the head off. You see the head will be turned around like this. Front legs are cut off. Have to do that in order to put this thing back together because all the sewing is going to be in the rear end and in, in the legs. So we got to, he's tubed, so we got to slide this hide over this way. <clears throat> First thing I'm going to start on is the ears, and I've already done one. And what I'm using is like a elastic or it's a real thin plastic material. Uh, it's translucent, you can see through it. Uh, that's kind of what we want. I'll show you what, what the uh, reason is for that. You want to be able to see through these ears. So if you shine a light through them, you can, you can kind of see what that works, how that works. This ear I've already cut out. And I've, what I'm using is just a sheet of this stuff here. You can get it from any Taxidermy uh, supply place. It's just a this type of airliner. You can use this for several different things. Uh, you can use it for a septum in the, in the nose of about any animal. You can use it for uh, small mammals uh, like this fawn, rabbits, coons, that sort of thing. And then what I have, I don't have any clear hide paste or glue, so I'm going to use a translucent Bondo. And then I'm gonna add my uh, red flocking materi material to that to get that little bit of pink inside the ear. So this is kind of a tedious job here because everything's small that we're working with and it's gonna take a little bit of time but we can, we can get it all done right here. And the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, this, the second ear here, I'm gonna go ahead and place it in here. And I'll show you the process with that. Get everything set up here. And this is my transparent Bondo here. Uh, I think you've seen other taxidermists use that, use this here on, on some YouTube videos. This stuff's not cheap, it's kind of expensive, but it's worth it. So I'm gonna get this ear, I'm gonna take this uh, tongue depressor and run it up and get this ear opened up. And what I've done, I've taken the cartilage out of this ear too, so it's just all skin. So I'm gonna go in through the mouth to do this. So I'm gonna try and pull everything here to where I can get to it. When I'm doing this, I wanna try and turn the nose inside out because I don't want to get any of this uh, Bondo on the hair. And I want to be able to find that ear canal and right there it is. So I've got my ear liner here ready. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and mix up my Bondo. Get it out here on my cup. Get it ready to stir up. Does not take hardly any of the hardener. I mean, it's just very little. And you wanna use as little as possible. That gives you a little more working time to, to shape the ear the way you want it. And then all I'm gonna use is just a pinch of this red flocking material. And you can see that it comes out pink and it's translucent so you'll be able to see through it with a light. So what I'm going to go ahead and do here, I'm going to 
try to slip this little bit of ear liner in here. I'm gonna try it too. When you've got big fat fingers, it makes it a little more difficult to do this type of stuff. You just have to take your time and give it up. Now I've got ear liner where I need it. So I'm gonna try and pull this back out so I can get in there and I wanna take tongue depressor, put a little bondo on there, and I want to go right up the back side of that ear liner. And then I'm going to squeeze that and pull all that bondo off of there. <clears throat> now I'm going to run it all up the back side. It's kind of hard to see going in this direction, but this is about the easiest way to get in there. I want to make sure I work it all the way up to the very, very end of that ear. That's the back side. Now I have to do the inside. I'm going to make up, mix up some more here. So now what I'm going to do is go right up to the inside. I'm going to make sure I fill it all the way around, all the way out to the very edge of the ear. Now the next thing I need to do is start building the ear butt. And I'm just going to use regular potter's clay for that. So I want to open this ear canal up to where I can see the bottom of that ear liner. I'm going to shove this clay up in there. You can use your little modeling tool, whichever will work for you. Getting in these small areas like this, it probably takes a, a little modeling tool. <laughs> this is going to form the ear butt. And it's also going to stay soft enough where I can continue to work with it after I get the, uh, the head pushed up in there. Then I can form the ear butt to the actual head, shape them and form them the way I want, get the ears to stick in the right place. The main thing is, is getting it in there and getting the back side of this all connected to where it looks like it's one. There's no ripples anywhere. Got to get everything smoothed out. Continuing to work with that Bondo as it's setting up and getting everything formed the way it needs to be. And it's just now starting to get hard in there. Everything's starting to set up now. And it takes it about five minutes or so. So now I've kind of got the back side done. I'm gonna do a little bit on this, this bottom corner here, this bottom side. So now I'm gonna <clears throat> take this head. I'm gonna put the eyes in here. I've already cut out the grooves with my uh, sculpting tool to tuck in the lips. I've already took my Dremel tool, cut out the nostrils, the uh, tear ducts, the eyes. I've cut a few grooves in here to put a little, some little wrinkles because he's, he's got such a sharp turn. He's gonna have some wrinkles there. And probably also what we'll do, we'll, we'll beef up his his nose here, we'll put a little more clay here on this, these two edges and kind of flare out the nostrils because he is going to be looking at that butterfly and when a deer is looking at something, he's using his nose, he's using his eyes, he's going to have his ears forward because he's trying to figure out what that thing is. He's, he's, he's newborn, he's never seen a butterfly before, so it's something new to him. Bird! No, that's not a bird. That's a butterfly. Butterfly. So I'm going to put these eyes in and I'm just going to use a little bit of 
clay for a base. And I want to make sure that these things are level, which I'm going to have to, these eyes are, I forgot they were a little bit big, so I'm going to have to do some carving. I'm going to have to take my clay back out. Give me just a second here. I'm gonna see if I can find a bit. So I just use a one inch paddle bit there. And now that eye will fit in there, right where I need it. I'll just have to build up this eyebrow with critter clay. And when we do that, we're gonna have to go in through the mouth or, or even through the eyeball, through the skin because we can't put the clay on here and then shove this thing up through here. It's just gonna smear the clay right off there when we run it through that, that neck. But we can go ahead and put these eyes in. So I wanna make sure they're pretty level here. That looks to be about right. And then I'll take a little piece of clay and run right around that edge and that'll help hold that eye in there. And I want to have enough clay in there so when I tuck my skin in, the clay will help hold that skin. If I don't have enough clay in there, which I'm going to add more with the critter clay later on, but that helps hold the eye in pretty good. And when I put this other eye in, I want to make sure it's the same as the other one. The one that's already in there. And kind of get a front view. That looks pretty good there. We've also left the plastic coating over these eyes. That way they'll stay clean while we're uh, working with this thing. There's going to be hide paste get on them and everything, but that'll be fine because there's a plastic coating on there and that'll help protect them. And then at the very end, when this thing dries out and we get everything painted, we can uh, peel off the plastic. My wife, I gotta finish that. So now we've got the head, we've got the eyes in, heads ready. Uh, so what I've got to do now is try and get this skin turned inside out to where I can get to that head. I don't know how. You're gonna shove his head up some butt. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> so we're going to use a little bit of hide paste here. And I'm going to put it on the, the actual skin, on the neck part, and on the base of the skull or the head. Hopefully, this will make that head slide up in there a little easier. Not even sure this is going to work, but we're going to give it a shot. May not work. <clears throat> it worked. Little bit twisted, so I'm trying. Just want to make sure that the little white patch on his throat is squared up. Eyes seem to be in the right place. You can, in fact, shove a head, a fawn's head, up his hind end. <laughs> Not easy, but it can be done. <clears throat> Just want to make sure everything is symmetrical. The two stripes here on his back need to be coming out in the same space or same spot on the back of his head there, right behind his ears. Just have to pay attention to stuff like that, get everything symmetrical, make sure the white patch on his throat is where it needs to be. Now, we've got that part. So now we've got to go back in here and we've got a bondo, that neck. First thing I'm gonna do is put some hide paste around this neck. So this fawn is gonna go together 
just like this. So we've got to bond over that. Everything is where it's supposed to be. Okay. So what I've already done, I've taken some Bondo out of the container. I've got it put in here. I'm gonna add a little bit of the hardener. And I'm not gonna put a lot of the hardener because I want this to set up a little bit slower, give me a little more working time. So I wanna double check this before I pull that hide over. I wanna see everything is right. A little bit of skin pinched in there. We're gonna have to just work our way down. tucking and pulling this is going to be a trouble area here because that neck turns so sharp right now I'm just checking to make sure all the skin is going to lay where it's where it needs to it seems like it's a little twisted it needs to come around this way a little more we'll make sure these shoulders are where they're supposed to be The skin seems to be lined up pretty decent there, so now I'm gonna pull all this back over. I wanna find that leg pocket. And right there it is. So this is the leg that goes there. And we're gonna have to bondo it also, along with some hide paste on it. I added very little hardener to this one just so it would take a little longer to set up. I want to make sure nothing's twisted here. All right, so I got that leg in place. Now I'm going to run a sh screw in there. Make sure it stays. All right, so we'll give that a few minutes to set up before I do the next leg. So we've got this leg inserted now. Now we've got to move to the other one. So I'm going to do a little bit of rearranging here. So I'm going to mix me up a little bit Bondo here. It's important to Bondo these legs because they won't hold with just one screw in them. I'm going to make this leg slide in a little easier. I'm going to put a little hide paste on it. Okay, so this leg goes like this. Just want to feed it through real slow. Don't need to get in no big hurry on this. Try not to get any Bondo on the hair. I'm okay with getting hide paste on the hair because it'll wash off. I don't want to get any Bondo on there. Try and get all that skin to pull down in place. I want that elbow to match up. You can see where the elbow is, the long hairs. And everything kind of comes to a corner right there. So you want to line that up. You want to keep the uh, where the white and the brown meet, you want to keep that line right in the middle of the back of that leg. And find that spot where everything comes together there, even. You don't want any cracks or seams to show through. So I'm just kind of feeling right now. Okay, right there is where it needs to go. So, I know where it needs to go. I'm going to grab me a screw now. crumbs out of there still a little bit loose so what I'm gonna do is mix up some more Bondo put a little more Bondo on that 
Well, that's sitting. I'm going to make sure everything's lined up here. Oh, that's good. We're in pretty good shape there. The length is good on the leg. You want to make sure you get all these Bondo crumbs out of here. The stuff that didn't quite get to where it was supposed to. And I'm going to add a little hide paste. Now it's just a matter of height adjustment on these back legs, getting everything lined up. This is this back joint right here. So we've got to pull that up. We've got to tuck all this in down here. And we got his tail here to work with. I'm gonna work with these eyes and this nostril last. What I'm gonna do is put a little extra moisture to it just to keep it from drying out. This is water. So now the, the long process starts. We got to sew all this up. So what we're going to do, we'll start sewing and then we'll take a break with the camera because we don't want to bore you guys to death with sewing. And then we'll come back after everything's sewed up. So what I have to do is sew up these legs now, from these front legs from here down to the hoof. And then the whole rear end has to be sewed up. I'll insert the tail, and what I've done with the tail, I run a wire in, and I made his tail where it's gonna come angle up, because that's how it is in the cartoon. His tail kinda swoops up like that, and then the butterfly is sitting right on top of it. And I've got a wire run in here, and I've shoved a bunch of clay up in here to fill in where the, the meat used to be in that tail, and then we'll just stick it in and I'm gonna take and flare these hairs out and how I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna pinch this clay, I'm gonna pinch it flat and it should make these hairs lay out flat like that and it'll flare his tail out. We're just gonna do some sewing and then we'll be back in a few minutes. Well, I've got everything sewed up, so just tucking in all this skin where it needs to be tucked in, trying to fill these legs out. So we're getting there. Just a matter of tucking all the skin in where it needs to go now. Getting him groomed up and getting his face finished. Got one leg a little loose, but it ain't coming off there, so we're good there. Uh, I wanna do my brush. Spots are pretty much in line where they need to be. Groom him up, he really, really changes him. It's gonna look a whole lot better. So now I wanna work on the face here. I'm gonna get this skin moved around where I need it to start. I always start with the tear duct. Make sure it's in line. That kinda, when you push that tear duct in, that kinda lines everything up. I do have a little tear in the corner of this eye and I think there's one in the other eye also but we can fix that so now I'm going to build me a small eyelid we don't have to beef up the eyelids on these fawns quite as much as we do a normal an adult deer I'm just going to roll up a little bit there in my hand right along the top of that eye, eyeball. This one's gonna be a little tougher because I can't get to it. Getting closer. Now we gotta try and tuck his mouth in. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna check to see how well this nose fits. Not too bad, I need a little bit of clay. In there, stay. I 
That's going to be a challenge to get to back in there. Yeah, I got to get these ears where I want them. So, this base is made up of peat moss, and this is just fake moss. Or actually, it's real moss, but it's uh, been uh, preserved and it's painted green, dyed green. These flowers I got off Amazon, these are daisies, and these look just like the wild daisy. You want to make sure when you get these that you get the ones with the correct leaves, because some of them don't have the correct leaves on them. If you're wanting to get the actual daisy look from that looks real, these are the right ones to get. They just come in two little bouquets and you just snip off what you want, put them where you need them. So now we're going to attempt to put this little fawn on here. And I need to get a drill bit. So now we'll figure out where we want to put him. I built a little bit of a hill here to put him on to get his front end kind of up. Now I'm going to drill these all the way through and then my plan is to put uh, some felt on the bottom of this so it won't scratch the table or whatever, wherever it's going. got him in there and this is a butterfly I made out of that cellophane or that this is a monarch butterfly and all that is is wire foam I cut out the shape painted the wings good to go Get it here in a second. Hopefully that'll stay. <laughs> I'll groom him up a little more. We'll come back in three or four days and uh, finish his nose, paint him up, finish the clay work around his eyes. Uh, we'll come back in a few days and uh, finish it up, see how he looks. <laughs> Butterfly ain't gonna stay. All right, so we're back. It's been about what, three days. Three days, uh, so I'm gonna pull pins. I'm gonna pull the plastic out of his nose here. He's looking pretty good. So now what we're gonna do do a little clay work around his eyes inside of his nose and then paint him up and he'll be finished. So what I'm doing for the nose is just a little bit of pink uh, epoxy sculpt. And this is just a uh, seal up the inside of that nose. Just not take a whole lot because he's got such a tiny, tiny nose. This also helps hold the skin in place if it tries to, to dry out anymore. Uh, it shouldn't dry out anymore because it's also got hide paste in there. This is, this will take care of the inside of the nostril. It'll bring everything together. You know, I'm using pink. I don't normally have to do much painting inside there. This side's really hard to get to. It's turned so tight. Now I want to fill in this tear duct here. I'm putting a little bit of a safety solvent on my sculpting tool to smooth out this 
epoxy sculpt, make it easier to work with. And it gives, makes it look like flesh. I had a little bit of a hole right here, remember on this corner of the eye. So I'm gonna take some of this epoxy sculpt and just try and fill in that crack. And then we'll paint over it and you shouldn't be able to tell that there was even a hole there. So now we're all set to do a little painting. I wanna grab the fleshy pink first. I'm just gonna go over this nose just a very little bit. Do a little bit around these eyes. Put a little bit in the inside of this ear. I'm not gonna do a whole lot of fleshy pink in there. I'm gonna go over that with dusty pink. Wipe off just a little bit on the nose. This is the dusty pink. I'm gonna go ahead and do those ears. I always make sure I clean my airbrush after each time I change color of the paint. And I'm just using lacquer thinner because this is lacquer based paint. Now I want to brush out these ears and make them look a little softer. This little brush here works really good for getting in the tight spots there. So now I'm going to go to the cocoa brown. This will go around the eyes and the nostrils. I'm gonna do just a little bit of nose pad gray on that nose. I'm gonna put a little bit of the uh, Mod Podge on there and kind of bead that nose up so it don't look so flat. Now after I've painted all around these eyes, I wanna take my brush and just soften things up a little bit. Kind of blend everything in. This is my detailing bottle. It has a very fine tip on it. And I just want to squeeze out just a little bit. This will be hard to see. These are very, very tiny beads. Okay, so we'll let that dry for a second. We can go ahead and peel off the plastic on the eyes. This one's gonna be a challenge. Got my hand a little bit in the nose over here, so I gotta redo that. So we'll let this dry for a second. I'm gonna put the fan on it. We'll come back, paint it, and we'll put the butterfly on his tail and he'll be done. This is not gonna take very much at all. That's it. So now the last touch up will be putting a clear coat around his eyes and on his nose. And all this is is liquid crystal. It's lacquer based also. I try not to overdo it. I just kind of let it beat up and then run down the nose. And then we'll put a little bit around the eyes and make them look wet. I know how to do it. Finishing touches. This is the butterfly that I made. Legs are made out of wire. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to try and put these legs around that tail. And here we have it. That's the finished product right there. Something different, something neat. A realistic Bambi pose. All right, well, 
that's all for this uh, little mount here. Hope you like this. Uh, what I'm gonna probably do next is uh, do this whitetail. It'll be going on a whiskey barrel mount or a whiskey barrel base. And I put a little snow scene on there and I've got a half barrel over here with a snow scene on it. Possibly in the future, we'll do some videos on how to do some uh, bases, create those. We can show you how to make anything you want. So thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.